Hello everyone, I'm back with my new lesson video. This time, I will be discussing the topic about elasticity of materials under the subject general physics. I am your teacher, Mr. Mark Anthony B. Laroya. What is elasticity of materials all about? First, let us define what is elasticity. When we say elasticity, it is the ability of a deformed material body to return to its original shape and size when the forces causing the deformation are removed. So meaning, once you applied a, apply a force on a certain material, it deforms, and then after removing that applied force, it is the ability of that material to return to its original shape or size. So, for example, we can say that a rubber is more elastic than a wood because a rubber can easily return to its original shape after the applied force is removed, while for the wood, it is less elastic because once it is deformed, it is very hard for it to go back to its original shape. So if we compare the elasticity, we can say that rubber is more elastic than the wood. Or should we say rubber is more elastic than a wood? But in this lesson video, we will be focusing more on the topic about stress, strain, and as well as the elastic modulus. So let us now talk about stress. All solid materials exhibit some degree of elasticity which resists permanent deformation caused by an applied force. When slightly deformed by an applied force, it will return to its original shape and dimensions when the force is removed. We can also give the formula for stress as stress is equal to force over area, or that is F over A. This is actually the same as the formula of pressure, but we're just simply going to use this formula for, this, uh, for our discussion in stress. Where F is the magnitude of the applied force normal to the cross-sectional area of the material, and that is our A. The SI units of stress is Newton per meter squared, or that is equivalent to Pascal, or that is denoted by PA. There are different types of stresses. The first one is what we call the tensile stress. Tensile stress in a sense that there are tension forces applied on the object. The applied forces tend to stretch the material. The second one is the compressional stress, where the forces are towards the object and compresses the material. The applied forces squash the material. And we also have what we call the shear stress. The applied forces tend to twist the material or to make one part of it move relative to another part. Let us now compare the two different types of stresses in detail, the tensile stress and the compressional stress. Let's say you have the material and it has its original length that is L sub zero, the material will experience tension forces and these tension forces will create an elongation for the material. Or should we say that there will be an extension in terms of length of the material and that will be the delta L. And this is what we call tensile stress. On the other hand, for compressional stress, let's say the material has its original length, then it will experience compression. And therefore, as it compresses, the change in length is decreasing. So the change in length or delta L is negative. And that is compressional stress. Here comes now the breaking stress, or sometimes it is also called as the ultimate tensile stress, 
when we say breaking stress, it is the maximum amount of tensile stress that a material can withstand before the material starts to break. So let us now solve a problem involving stress. The force needed to break a piece of steel wire with a cross-sectional area of 3 times 10 raised to negative 6 square meter is 3000 newton. Find the breaking stress of the steel wire. So the given R, the cross-sectional area of the steel wire, which is 3 times 10 raised to negative 6 square, square meter, and the applied force of 3000 newton. So in Computing the breaking stress, or simply stress, is simply the applied force over its cross-sectional area, and that is 3,000 newton divided by 3 times 10 raised to negative 6 square meter, and that would be equal to 1 times 10 raised to 9 pascal. 1 times 10 raised to 9 pascal is also the same as 1 giga pascal and that is the breaking stress of the steel wire and now let us talk about strain what is strain it is the relative increase in length of a sample or extension per unit length or simply we can say that it is the ratio of the change in length of the material and or with respect to its original length. So we can say that strain is equal to change of length, that is delta L, over its original length, L sub 0. It allows us to get a fair comparison between the amounts that the material is stretched. And take note, strain is a ratio and it is unitless. Then we go now to elastic modulus. Elastic modulus describes the proportionality of stress with the strain of the material being deformed and on the nature of deformation. So this will give us the formula for elastic modulus of stress over strain. So this is simply the ratio of stress and strain. There are different types of elastic modulus. Take note that elastic modulus are actually numerical constants that show the resistance of a material in different aspects. The first one is the Young's modulus. It measures the resistance of a solid to a change in its length. It is also referred as modulus of elasticity. It is the ability of the material to withstand changes in length when under lengthwise tension or compression. The second one is the shear modulus. It measures the resistance to displacement of the planes of a solid sliding past each other. Sometimes it is also called as the modulus of rigidity. It is the measure of the elastic shear stiffness of the material. And then we also have the bulk modulus. Bulk modulus measures the resistance that solids or liquids offer to changes in terms of their volume. In bulk modulus, it is the property or elastic properties of solid or any fluid when under pressure or in of all different so uh, surfaces, the applied pressure reduces the volume of a material, which return to its original volume when the pressure is removed. Let us now focus on Young's modulus, and it is also known as the elasticity in length. Young's modulus is denoted by capital Y, wherein its formula is the same as the other elastic modulus, stress over strain, where stress is applied force over the cross-sectional area while for strain, this pertains to the ratio of the change in length of the material with respect to its original length. And the change in length is caused by tension force. So we can simplify this formula 
into this formula wherein the applied force times the original length all over the cross-sectional area of the material times its change in length. These are just some selected materials wherein these are their Young's modulus value or constants where the unit is equal or the unit is in terms of Pascal. We're going to use some of this for our example and problem solving. Let us now solve a problem involving Young's modulus. A vertical steel beam in a building supports a load of 7 times 10 raised to 4 newton. If the length of the beam is 4 meters and its cross-sectional area is 8 times 10 raised to negative 3 square meter, find the distance that the beam is compressed along its length. So, take note that our material here is steel and base coming from the table that I showed you a while ago, the value of the Young's modulus for steel is 20 times 10 raised to 10 Pascal. So here are the given. The applied force is 7 times 10 raised to 4 Newton, or that is 70,000 Newtons. The original length of the material is 4 meters. And the cross-sectional area is 3 times 10 raised to negative 3 square meters. We're going to look for the change in length. And take note that the beam is compressed. So the formula for our Y, or Young's modulus, is FLO all over A delta L. But we are after the change in length of our steel beam. So by there we're going to der if we're going to derive our formula for delta L, this would be FLO all over Young's modulus times the cross sectional area. So we're simply going to substitute the values of F, L O and the area, and of course the value of Y, which is twenty times ten raised to ten Pascal for a steel beam. So, this is our formula now, or our solution in solving for the delta y, and the answer now would be the change in length of our steel beam, and that is equal to 1.75 times 10 raised to negative 4 meters. This is the change in length of our steel beam. So thank you very much for watching my lesson video and I hope you learned something new in physics. So see you again next time. Take care and God bless.